so when I was reading in verse 4, now when he had left speaking, that was Jesus, of course, and we've read those scriptures, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep. Deep is the word for me, deep, deep. And it just kind of jumps out at me, deep. And let down your nets for a draught. So I stayed there and I said, so did that mean that Peter was in shallow water before and now he's saying deep? And so as I began to consider and meditate and did some word studies, etc., cetera, I, I agreed that I thought that Peter had been in the shallows. Now, I'm not a fisherman. I have no idea. I barely know what a, pol- a pole, you know, rod and reel does. I'm not good like Joshua Levitt. You know, I, I, my, I watch my husband and my daughter Abigail fish, but I'm not a fisherwoman, which is really interesting because my mother's parents were actually fishermen on the Mississippi River. And so I don't know why I never got into it, but Henry and I were going to actually make some uh, trips uh, to go do this because I thought, I'm going to learn how to do this. So I certainly don't know anything about net fishing. Okay? I know nothing. So this is all supposition on my part, just letting you know. But I am looking at Peter actually casting his nets in shallow waters. Maybe, I don't know why, but I just thought because the Lord didn't say just go cast your nets into the water. He said the deep that it must have been, he must have been fishing in the shallows previously. So now cast him into the deep. All right, well, I'm pretty sure that Peter's thinking, I did where we're supposed to fish, because I'm sure he had a reason for being in the shallows, because as fishermen, I'm sure they all know the tricks of the trade, and the deep sounded like maybe something he might not want to do, because he didn't think it was going to yield the fruit. This is my thinking. And so I'm thinking, oh, okay, shallow. All right, shallow. Now, when you read down into verse, I think it's five, after he brought in this great and magnificent fruit of his labors and did not have nets, I saw, but when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Yes, that could have been because he didn't use nets, but I also took it as that I did not ask you where I should fish. I did not seek you to ask you where to fish. I took the easy route, which is the shallow lying fruit, as opposed to going into the deep and getting a best, the best ever. Now, how does that apply to you and me? Well, I think you're right when you dethrone yourself and then you ask the, the Godhead to be in charge of your life. That is a deep walk. That is a deep walk. Now, if you want to just play at reading the scriptures, or if you just want to do your duty of reading the scriptures, and do your duty of praying, I think that's shallow. And God is saying to us that he wants us to go deeply with him. Now, when you go deeply with him, that means you get no recognition whatsoever. That means you lay aside self. It's all about God. It's all about what he wants, and he gets the glory. Not my fishing, but his fishing. Now, I want to turn to 1 Corinthians 2, and I'm not going to be long, just this one more thing I want to say. Because we have a great, I think, example about humbleness of heart about walking in the ways that God wants us to walk without us getting any recognition whatsoever. And that I think confirms what I'm talking about, about deep. Starting in verse 1. And I, brethren, when I came to you, this is Paul speaking, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. So Paul is saying, I am nobody. I'm just a servant of God, and I'm not coming to you with any talents or anything that I have specifically learned how to do. I'm coming in the name of the Lord. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. This is Paul speaking. How many of you have ever come to the open mic and felt that very same way? 
okay? I feel like that all the time, by the way. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. That's what happens when you enthrone the Godhead in your life. Not me, not us, but him. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. How a bit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God and mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the wor- world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. So I'm not coming in because I, and you're not coming because we went to some great school that teaches us how to lead people to Christ, etc. We're just coming in the name of the Lord, just like David did to slew, to slew Goliath. He slew Goliath. Just, I'm coming in the name of the Lord. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. That's us. Woohoo! That's us. Yes, prepared, as Pastor Benny was talking about in the life that's going to come in the millennium, etc., but also in this life right now. Who would ever thought that some of the people that have ever talked, like Moses, Moses couldn't even speak, but yet God used him. Joshua was used because he had a good report. It wasn't anything that he was like, yeah, he just knew God would do it. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit, for the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Deep calleth unto deep. That's another scripture. So he is asking us to go deep. He's asking the things that we've done in the past that bore fruit, okay, the shallow Christian life. He's saying, I want you to cast your nets into deeper water. I've got something more for you. I've got something more for this country. I've got something more for this world. Because I, too, believe there's a revival coming. And we need to not just prepare to pull them in. We need to prepare to keep them in. Okay, so that means we have to provide a safe, loving environment, which means that we need to deal with ourselves to make sure that we have all of this in order for that day that is coming. So I am encouraging you because I believe that, that Peter saw that, he's, that he was not really asking God what to do. He, he, his, his vessel was this little when God wanted it to be this big. And so he says, I'm a sinner because I am not allowing you to do the deep things within my life so that I can bring forth a greater yield, not for my glory, but for his. There are people out there that we're going to miss very much if they don't come into the fold. Ones that you don't even know. But there's somebodies that are going to make a difference for the whole Oliver picture of the family of God. So I exhort you and encourage you, don't look for the low-lying fruit anymore. God is taking, he wants you to mature. He wants, you, he wants to take you into the deep things of who he is. He wants you to be led moment to moment by his spirit. And, and church, we need to do that. We need to do that. I want you to do that for me, and I want to do that for you, for his glory. Amen.